Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing a living legend, an honest-to-God, late 20th century military contract watch with a mechanical movement. This is the Zenith Rainbow El Primero Flyback Caliber 405. You can see and you can purchase this historic standard issue French Aviator's Timepiece on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this historic mid to late 90s collectible timepiece from Zenith. Now the watch on my wrist is 40 millimeters across the outer extremities of the bezel. It's actually even more compact than its nominal 40 millimeter measurement if you measure the outer flanks of the case. In terms of thickness, it's actually fairly slim. 12.6 millimeters despite automatic winding, the chronograph and the flyback function, plus the rotating bezel. Though designed to be worn with a flight suit, this watch will slip under the sleeve of a business suit. Lug to lug, very compact. We're talking the 90s here. Elephantitis had not set in, therefore lug to lug this watch measures 46.3 millimeters and you can see the bracelet is wonderfully flexible so whether you wear it NATO style on a NATO strap or you go upscale with the bracelet you can pull the bracelet links straight down just as you can a strap to fit a very small wrist in my estimation this watch could be worn securely on an oval shaped wrist of as little as 13 centimeters in circumference. Now I mentioned this is a military contract watch and I don't mean to say this exact unit was issued. What I mean to say is that this model was specifically commissioned from Zenith by the French military. The French Air Force commissioned this watch. It is a aviator style flyback variant of the El Primero known as caliber 405 with the special minute dial with a sector of colors, the sector of colors and a calibrated section of the bezel characterized this version as distinct from the standard white and black stainless steel flyback themselves distinguished from the broader rainbow range of El Primero chronographs by their bi-directional bezel and flyback movement. Now the watch features a dominant satin finish and that was the idea. Satin and therefore low glare. It was ideal for an aviation environment. Now many of these watches were delivered on the bracelet. It was more common than the strap back in the day. Contrary to popular belief you can fit the bracelet version onto a strap without absolutely any encumbrance or difficulty and the bracelet is a wonderfully silky piece. You can see a five link design. It has broad channels on the underside to allow the wrist to aerate in a hot environment as well as to avoid pinching skin or pulling hair and it closes securely with what was quite deluxe for the mid 90s, a double deployment with trigger actuation, quite secure when closed, also low of profile to avoid desk diving damage. Now you can see the case is simple, beautifully contoured, it has a utilitarian an honesty to it, but it is not without art. Notice the differing intermediate knurling as you work your way around the bezel for easier grip and also visual distinction. Note how the deeper knurling coincides with the stations of the 10 minutes. Also, this bezel is remarkably intact. I believe it to be original and the most unusual quality of this bezel for an original unit is that it still possesses the luminescent pearl in original tritium at the station at 60. Most of these pearls fall out at some point in the course of ownership, which is to say this is a rare survivor. Now the watch was made in only a few thousand copies for any given example, any given variant bracelet strap, the rare mango dial was produced in only hundreds of copies, and the black and the white was produced in thousands of copies as well. But the important thing to remember is that all of them have the same beating heart inside. It's the dial that distinguishes this one from the mango as well as the black and white. This is the one people think of when they think of the rainbow. Now, the one quality you may find missing, and you can see hints of it, was the original anodized red stretch that ran for the first calibrated 15 minutes. Now, the one thing I'll say about this one is that you can still see hints of the original red, and the fact that that's there and so is the pearl suggests that this is a watch that has been worn, has faded a little bit with exposure and use, but nevertheless retains all original fabric, and that's something in and of itself. You'll also note that the dial is unbowed. It hasn't degraded the way many of these have. Now, 
use will rub off the red anodization of the bezel, but UV light will degrade the colors of the dial. And you can see the hands chronograph minutes and seconds, as well as the calibrations of that multicolored sector style minutes register are wonderfully intact. You'll also note the watch features the later tritium dial. Early examples of this watch actually featured Luminova, but the users specified continuous luminescence, making this one of the few watches in history to have started out as a Luminova dial and then transitioned to tritium later on. Inside is an El Primero flyback caliber 405, 31 joules, automatic winding with a 52 hour power reserve and the classic 10 beat per second high beat El Primero cadence. You can see it features the one push reset and restart of a flyback function. It features a quick set for the date and a crisp column wheel to actuate the functions. You can feel it, you can hear it, and yes, it is a lateral clutch, so there's a little bit of jump built in, but this watch with its characteristically quirky El Primero quality of setting the date in the outermost position and the time in the intermediate position is original fabric as delivered perhaps to an adventurer, but I can't guarantee, during the 1990s. What I will say is that this was one of the last contract mechanical watches designed by Swiss industry for a modern first world military, and they served into the 2000s with some possibly still being active as late as NATO operations in Afghanistan. This is a modern legend, a watch with a gorgeous dial, a watch with an undeniable pedigree from a true manufacturer and a wonderful backstory. You can see this, one of my favorite watches I've ever reviewed on this channel and buy it, leaving me somewhat wistful on our website.